Hi guys, I hope you're good. In today's video, I want to talk to you about the census. And a census is basically a survey of the population. And it happens in the UK once every 10 years. And this year is census year. In fact, census day, which I will explain in the video, is happening on the 21st of March. Ultimately, what a census is, it's a survey of every household across the country and it gathers information on everybody living there to gain a better understanding of the population and our needs. It asks questions, for example, about your age, your ethnicity, your sex, religion, whether or not you have a disability and also about the services that you use, for example, supermarkets, schools, GP services, other medical providers. Our invites have been sent to every household to take part in the census. Allegedly, you can be fined up to a thousand pounds for not taking part in the census. So how do people living on the water or others with no fixed abode ensure that they are able to take part? Well, in this video, I am going to explain how boaters can take part in the census. Actually, I'm not going to explain it. Today, I am joined by Ian Bell from the Office of National Statistics, who is responsible for making sure that people are able to participate in the census. And he also happens to be a boater. Hello. Hi there, Lorna. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. So this is Ian. You are involved in the upcoming census. That's correct. Yes, I look after the census. <laughs> So in my role, I've got two main things I do. One is to make sure that the census in 2021 is delivered successfully with everybody completing it across the country, including voters. And the other is I also look after all our COVID infection statistics about how many people have COVID. Okay, that's um, keeping you busy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not just a small job. <laughs> So I've done a brief introduction on what the census is, but in your words, what would you say a um, census exactly is? The census is here to count each and every one of us in England and Wales on the weekend of the 20th and 21st of March. And the reason it's so important is it helps inform vital public services up and down the country, from healthcare to schools to education, through transport, travel, and even things I've seen charities utilising it in order to gain funding. I've seen kitten groups put bit cases through to get their play playgrounds enhanced in their local communities to get better play facilities for children. And much more than that, supermarkets utilise it in order to get the right number of disabled parking spaces and much more. Perhaps some of the questions people would be looking at them and thinking, why are they asking that? That doesn't make sense. Um, so there's obviously logic behind all of the information that you're gathering. Oh yeah, we do a large scale consultation. Uh, we start preparing what you put in the census in. We started it in 2015 with a big consultation and finalised the content. And often there's groups questions around housing and around the uh, around transport, travel, groups around employment, education, and then groups around equalities and. Uh, helping provide information to monitor uh, equalities. Okay, so you work with, um, is it government organisations, charities, community groups? We work right the way across the board with all different communities uh, in order to make sure everybody takes part. And often that's uh, both, we do it both through working through government organisations, but also more importantly and vitally, people in those local communities. So we've got over 300 engagement managers and community advisors up and down the country working with local communities. They're building in, depending on the local circumstances in, say, in East London, working through with the Muslim community to make sure they all get involved in it. But equally, it can be very different. We've got partnerships with, say, the Premier League and the Football League in order to encourage groups to take part. And indeed, uh, you're doing uh, films such as this for the boating community and uh, um, and work with uh, Canal Boat magazine as well. Brilliant. So on the topic of boaters, and I can see that you're on a narrow boat yourself, I've seen a lot of boaters asking how will they get involved in the census? 
So a number of different circumstances here, which we, I'll run through. So first off, if you spend the majority of your time at a permanent address and just happen to be on the boat on the weekend of census, then you'd fill it out for your permanent address. But if you spend most of your time on the boat, then you'll need to fill out your, or you're a continuous uh, cruiser. You phone up our contact centre. There's, I've got two numbers here, one for England and one for Wales for the community. So it's 0800 141 2021 for those in England and 0800 169 2021 for those in Wales. You phone it up. You phone them up, let them know you're in mobile accommodation such as a boat and get some description of your nearest landmark if you're not in a marina stroke permanent mooring. They'll, they'll either pre-populate it or send you a, um, and send you a unique access code which then enables you to go in online and complete the census for your boat. And what if you haven't got online access? If you've not got online ac access, then if you've got a place you usually get pulled, then they can send out a paper form to the place you usually get pulled from. Okay, because I know in the past, um, volunteers used to go knocking on all the boats and hand the paper form in because we used to have to fill out a paper form and then they'd come back a couple of weeks later and collect it back. Has that stopped then? Uh, we'll still have a field force going out and there will be folk around the most common, but obviously in a COVID secure type way. So um, it'll be all socially distanced and fully PPE'd, but we'll have people going by common locations for boaters to pick it up. But the simplest way for many will be just to phone up and get a, te a unique access code texted to you. I suppose COVID in a way has worked in your favour because most movements have stopped so um, it's going to be easier to get that information back from people. Uh, yeah, potentially, but equally um, I know we've got to make sure we reach everybody so please if you're hearing this do get in touch if you've not got a form or if you've not got an access code yet. Another thing with Covid, a lot of people will usually live on their boats full time but they may have got caught elsewhere because of lockdown or um, their marina has closed and they've had to temporarily uh, relocate. How should they fill out the census? They should fill it out how they usually would consider themselves to be. So if you would consider your usual residence to be on your boat, then fill it out as though the boat is your usual. And when you say that the census is over the weekend of the 20th and the 21st, does that mean that people have to wait until then to answer it or can they answer it at any time? No, they can answer at any time, but Dean, please do go, on, go online or fill out your paper form. There's no need to wait. And as you said, this year with COVID, how can you put it, there's a degree more certainty where people will be on the 20th and 21st anyway. So uh, feel free, go online or fill out the paper form now. So in effect, that's a deadline. It's a, it's a reference point and you, you fill it out according to what you'll be doing on that weekend so it's a reference point yeah but there's still time afterwards to fill it out for those who haven't done yet that as well what if people are a bit concerned about handing over their um personal information there's no need to be concerned at all so the census is wholly confidential all our analysis and all our results are kept absolutely uh confidential and secure and we check every analysis we put out to make sure nobody could ever be identified from any of our analysis. And census data is only released publicly in 100 years after the census. So, for example, we'll only release the 1921 individual details uh, in January next year. And so you can be guaranteed you will not, be, you will not have your details going around anywhere. What do you do with the data once you collect it? How do you um, kind of interpret it and share it out with all of the um, areas that you mentioned before, transport, supermarkets, things like that? So what we do is there's then a big period of processing all the data we get, amalgamating it, analysing it. What we've said is we will produce first results within a year. And then what there is usually is headline numbers about the size of the population by local authority, age and sex, 
But then as you move through, there then tends to be detailed focus topics around things like religion, ethnicity, around disability, and other areas of interest around transport working patterns and that. And so there tends to be a lot of analysis over the, over the year afterwards in order to cover as much as possible. And we're also putting a new online flexible uh, resource which enables people to do their own queries of census data without uh, safely and securely. And for voters in particular, why would you say it's so important for them to fill out the census? Because um, voting is often a com hidden community. The groups there often don't, don't. And voters are different in some respects from others. And uh, yeah, in many respects the same. And it's important everybody counts because if you're not in there, then you might not get the services you need. You might not get the uh, the places you need near the waterways you travel on. And so uh, vital that you feel everybody fills in to make sure everybody actually is included and gets the services they need. Do you think that by filling out the census, that could potentially help improve access to those services? I, I think it yeah, will potentially include, do that. I can't guarantee it's how the individual organisations use it afterwards. Mm. But if I can, the one thing I can say for sure is if the voting community aren't represented in there, it will put it more, the more at a disadvantage, us more at a disadvantage for being counted and having that access. I think that's all of the questions I had written down. Is there anything else that you would like to add? No, I don't think so. I think you covered the ground very comprehensively there, Lorna. <laughs> um, I'm certain as soon as we end the call, I'll go, oh, that, I should have asked him that. So if I do think of anything afterwards or if any of my viewers have got any questions, if they leave them in the comments down below, if there's anything that I can't answer or I can't find out on the internet, would I be able to get in touch with you and maybe follow up on some of the questions that are unanswered? That would be fine, no problem at all. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Ian. That was really informative. If there are any questions that you still have, like I said, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. I've also left the phone numbers that Ian mentioned down below and links to the census website. I hope that the video was useful and I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye.